Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with another special guest on the Gratitude podcast interview. And today I have a good friend of mine, also known as the Grateful Dad, which definitely connects with me as that gratitude guy. But uh, met Doug, uh, oh gosh, a dozen or so years ago. He's a great guy. We think very, very similarly. And so if you'd welcome to the podcast, Doug Gertner. Doug, how are you? Brooker, I've got no complaints. When I look at the state of the world, I realize I have so much to be grateful for. That's a theme that you and I ping pong back and forth every day almost. Yeah. And um, I'm well. Thanks for asking and thanks for inviting me here. You bet. You bet. So as we look at this sort of unprecedented aspect of the coronavirus, COVID-19, what has been your best coping mechanism to kind of deal with this since this all started about five or six weeks ago? Well, you know, setting aside or, or just including the theme that brought you and I together, that my daily gratitude practice um, is the foundation, if you will, of my coping. Um, I find that the, the, the basic sort of planning that I add to my day, my gratitude practice starts every day. The thing that I do right after I count my blessings by writing in my gratitude journal is to plan my day. Mm. And I do that, you know, almost seven days a week. And certainly during this, you know, sort of endless week that has turned into months that we'll see, you know, how long into this year we're going to need to really change our lives to stay safe and keep others safe. Um, planning each day, having um, a plan for it, something to look forward to, knowing what I'm in for, has made me not just more, you know, sort of calm and satisfied, but frankly, you know, as hard as it might be for some of us to stay motivated, it's helped me be more motivated and productive too. So oh, nice. that's what I end up doing on a daily basis is kind of knowing what's ahead from the time I get up until the time I'm ready to go to bed. Great tip. And that being organized and treating it like a business day, somebody said something about, I remember the first few days, I didn't even take a shower. I just got to go into sweats and watch the TV. And on one of these podcasts, somebody said, gosh, make sure you treat it like a business day and get up and take your shower and shave, put your clothes on, put your shoes on and so forth. And that was, that really helped. So that's been really good. So as gratitude is such a big part of your life and mine, as we know, have you noticed since this started, what are you most grateful for? Has it changed from what you were grateful for before this? Has it shifted as you've gone into this in terms of what you're uh, really focused on with gratitude? I'd say it's added. For me, you know, I, I, I count my blessings daily. And, you know, like you and I say, sometimes it's thankful. I mean, it's always grateful for things like my basic comfort and, and you know, the good fortune I have to be healthy and to have a, a roof over my head and food on the table and you know that the water that comes out of the shower every day is hot and you know so much to be thankful for and then i i'm always grateful for you know the the things that happen during every day that make every day different and while there's a certain you know sameness to my days as i said i'm in charge of planning them which means i plan to have you know, something different for dinner than I did last night or do something a little bit different with my time as I'm working and connecting with people and all the rest. Um, but I do think that I'm adding to this daily gratitude with, you know, I don't think it's selfish gratitude to say I'm grateful that I have so far avoided becoming a victim of the virus. Right. I'm grateful, certainly, that my loved ones are. And again, I'm grateful for, you know, a handmade mask mm, nice. that someone uh, um, was able to provide me with. And um, I'll be grateful tomorrow when I acquire my second handmade mask oh, because excellent. it's a good thing to have when I leave the house. So in a sense, I'm sort of adding layers of gratitude during mm. this virus. I have a little more time and I would say in some ways a lot more to be thankful for, even though days are not all that complex. Right, right. No, I like that layering. That's a good way to look at it as well. So when I, knowing you as well as I do and the, the amount of balls that you juggle, you do a lot of different things. You wear a lot of different hats and so forth. 
what would you say to the person maybe that doesn't quite know as much to do? They're kind of housebound. There may be some thoughts or ideas around things that they can be doing during this sort of downtime, if you will, by everybody is housebound. Well, let me address that, um, if I could, Dave, by, by actually describing how I plan my day. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that will, I think, give us an opportunity then to think about how do I plug in some things to, to make my day more robust and more satisfying. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think of my day as an arc. I, I don't know, you know, how many stats classes you ever had to take. I took the minimum number of statistics classes and barely got through them. <laughs> this is not about statistics, but what the, the, the thing I learned, the thing I would marvel at in that class was Professor Shaw would draw the normal curve, what it's called, the bell curve. Right. And I kind of draw my day in that same arc. Oh, I like that. At one end, I label the you know, six, seven, eight o'clock hour that I get um, up in. And then in the, at the other end is the hour that, you know, I'm getting ready to retire. And there's hash marks along the arc for each hour of the day. Mm -hmm. And then I start to draw in. For instance, today has a part blocked out for the time I'm spending with you. I know mm -hmm. that I'm not available to anyone else during that time. Right. I block in time for when I'm going to eat when I've got a commitment, something that I may want to do for pleasure. You notice I'm at the other end of the arc here where I know at five, six or seven o'clock today that one of my favorite musicians is going to stream a live nice. concert from their living room. Oh, There's nice. still a lot of hours in the day. And what do I plug in there? More food preparation and healthier and more diverse food preparation than I might have if I were more on the go. Mm, nice physical stuff i've already done yoga once today with the teacher live and i'm going to meet up with that same teacher in a zoom class later for restorative yoga something to kind of bring me down at the end of the day i also found by the way if you don't have an online teacher that my cable tv has great uh exercise classes oh great, to great. Follow along. and of course i won't show you but um we've got uh, going on seven inches of snow on the ground falling oh, right lady. now. So wow. I won't be going out for a walk today, but I encourage wow. folks, if you're not eating more and better, I mean, by more uh, regularly and better, you don't have to right. eat more right. um, and exercising more. There's two great opportunities. And I plan it into a whole day that allows me chunks of time whether it's to meet with a friend, to talk through stuff, or to work on my business, which is something I like to do. And, you know, let's be clear, there's social media to distract us at every turn. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you mentioned, too, that you're down in Colorado. I'm up in Seattle, and you've got six or seven inches of snow. And we've got clear blue sky and no clouds, so it's uh, not like a Seattle day, but just shows how the geography makes a difference. So, so what, a couple more questions. You're, you're somebody, again, who does a lot of different things. What have you thought, Doug, so far about what you may do to so-called hit the ground running when this ends? Because it's going to end. We don't know when. Maybe it's a vaccine. We're not quite sure how they're going to restart the country as they use. But have you thought of things that, that might be that you're thinking of now in this so-called downtime that might be big things that you're going to start really with a bang when it, it does end? Well, I, 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 very early on, you know, there's a refrain that I knew we would all start saying. And so I put quotation marks around it. That, mm -hmm. that phrase being something to the effect of, when this is all over, yeah. I'm going to. Yeah. Because on the one hand, your question is a great one. And yes, I want to be planning and thinking ahead and hit the ground running. At the same time, I don't want to say, oh, when this is over, I just crave well, it's great to crave and I will get those cravings met, but I don't want to spiral into, oh, if only I had something that I can't have until I can. Okay. So I'm looking forward to those things that I really enjoy and being at, getting back to restaurants, to live music, the oh, things yeah. I really enjoy. But what I'm thinking, Dave, is I'm laying the foundation as I reach out to people who, in my case, I want to do business with as a, a seminar presenter, as you know, I do workplace seminars right. all around the region. Um, I'm simply laying the groundwork and saying to folks, I have a catalog full of classes. Here's my brand new catalog. Take a look. I have a, um, 
online seminar that I'm going to give to you for free. Use it as you will. And I think for me, um, it's really, let's plan now. Let's use the same planning that I do to make sure that my days are, are somewhat prescribed and, and don't just get away from me. I'd like us you know, to think about the future in terms of what are we prescribing for ourselves and let's make sure that the future doesn't get away. So hitting the ground running, I think is, I'm laying that foundation again, just as I do daily with my gratitude and my plan, mm -hmm. I'm reaching out to folks. I'm, I'm letting folks know, you know, if June things open up or July, here's my available dates. Let's do business. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good. And I really like that. I love your bell curve uh, too. That's just, I've never thought about that in terms and that's really good. So that's neat. So last question, does Doug have sort of a, a mantra, a quote, a philosophy or something that you would say kind of describes your approach to life, but certainly through something that has this level of unprecedentedness, if you will, sort of something that kind of represents your overarching view of things? You know, I think so many of us um, work for a living and sometimes, as you know, in, in my persona as the Grateful Dad, one of the things that I always wanted to um, encourage other fathers was um, to, to not um, become so wrapped up in their role as provider and breadwinner and the person who was supposed to bring home the bacon that they lost sight of um, you know, the, the fatherhood part of their, their job and the gift no. of being a father. So um, I was quoted once as saying, be grateful like it's your full-time job. Mm. And I think, you know, I, I just want people to remember that most of us are gonna have a job for, you know, a while longer, even people looking at retirement, you know, or especially need to think in terms of what's next. All of us might feel a little bit retired, even though we're trying to work at our jobs as well. And so I come back to the thing that, you know, brought you and I together about gratitude. And I would just say, be grateful like it's your full-time job, um, which is just really to do it every day and make sure you take it seriously, even though you might do it with a lighter heart and a more open heart. Um, so there you have it. Be yeah. grateful like it's your full-time job. I like that. And I think, too, if you were to make a list of all the things that Doug Gertner has accomplished in his life, if I put down all my list of things, and hopefully it's a long list and made a big contribution to a lot of things, at the top of the list, it's never changed, is the thing I'm the proudest of is being a father. And so that's the Grateful Dad, and that's what's so neat about it. It's just you and I share that. And I don't know if you and I'd have the same, well, I, don't, I know for sure we wouldn't have the same relationship if one of us hadn't had kids. It just makes such a big difference. So, uh, well, as I'm, as I'm not surprised at all, some tremendous tips, including the bell curve, which is my favorite among many. So, but thank you so much, Doug. I really appreciate you being on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Dave. You bet.